Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today let's take a look at 3GS. So 3GS is a JavaScript library to program 3D applications for web browsers for those who support WebGL. And let's take a look at the official website of 3GS, this one here, 3GS.org. And we can see the examples over here. And you see this is 3D rendered. And this one here, looking like a Japanese little town. So you can render 3D objects, play animations, you can interact, move the camera, turn the camera around, zoom. And let's go back and take a look at the documentation. So you can just use it anywhere where you can use JavaScript. It's very easy to use. Here are some examples on how to set up. And I have prepared a few examples, which we're going to build today. So we're going to try a few geometry objects. We can rotate the camera. We can zoom in and take a look at the objects. Also, you can apply textures to objects. So there's a cube here, which has a texture. And we can take a look at it. You can also use lights, like this directional light. The light is coming from above. And you have different materials for the objects, like this shiny material and the other one, which is not so shiny. And also you can load 3D objects in your application. And this is an example which you can download from the internet. And as you can see, it also has an animation. And yeah, so let's try 3JS. So when you want to get started developing with 3.js, you just need any kind of JavaScript development environment. You can use any JavaScript based framework and I'm using Angular just out of convenience. And I have a brand new and fresh Angular project. I have a plain white page. There's nothing there. And the first thing we're going to do is we take a look at the documentation on how to install 3.js and we can use, um, we can install an npm package with this command. And that is what we are going to do. And when we done, when we've done that, we can use the three JS types and start developing right away. So let's go to the terminal and execute this command and install the three node package. So once it has been installed, we can just import the three JS types and start coding right away. It's time to create a 3D canvas on our web page. First things first, we must initialize some stuff. First, we need to create a camera. Then we create a WebGL renderer, then a scene, then an animation loop function, which is a function which gets called every frame. And at last, we need to attach the renderer to our DOM document so we can see the 3D canvas. And let's start right away with the camera. I can just do it here. And uh, I just define a variable with the name camera of type 3 from the 3 module perspective camera. And I just create a new one with the constructor new 3 perspective camera. And the constructor has several parameters. You can set the field of view. You need to specify the aspect ratio that is the, you know, width and height. It's typically window inner width divided by window inner height. And also the near and far parameters, the nearest point or the nearest distance to the camera is 1. And the farthest point of the camera is 1500. So there you go, now you have the camera with the field of view, the aspect ratio, the near and far parameters. And what we can do with the camera is we can set the camera position. and camera position set and we can set the x, y and z parameters. 
I just do it here x is 0, y is 5, and z is 5. So that means the camera is in the position x0. This x axis is the horizontal axis. We set it at the position 0. The y axis is going up and down. So by setting y to 5, I move the camera up. And the z-axis is the depth. If you go in, you are on the negative side of the z-axis. If you go out, you are on the positive side of the z-axis. That means I am moving the camera away from the origin. So the camera is moving away and up. And then we can specify camera look at. And this is the position where the camera is looking at. So I'm setting it to look at the origin of the 3D space. 0, 0, 0. And that's it. The camera is set up. And I notice that the autocomplete does not work here. And for that I need to install another package. This is the TypeScript types of 3.js. And so after the package has been installed, you can see the method parameters. And you can go through the definition of the classes. So that's very convenient. And now we can move on to the renderer. So I will create a renderer here. Define a variable renderer. And it is of type renderer from the 3GS. WebGL renderer. This one. And I can just create a new one, WebGL renderer. And for the renderer, I can provide a configuration object. And I can set, for example, anti-aliasing. And I set it to true. So that means that the edges of the objects are a little bit sharper. And we can also set some values to the renderer. Let's say renderer set pixel ratio and I can set it to the pixel ratio of the current window. Window device pixel ratio. And also I can set the size of the renderer. Set size. And the size it's uh, you see it is the width and the height and the width is let's say the width is the width of the current window of the web page window inner width inner width and window inner height just like that and also we need to create a scene let's just do that it's another variable I call a scene of type 3 scene and I create it with uh, also with the new constructor new scene and that's it the scene is now done so let us move on to the animation loop and we define an animation loop by providing a function and let's call it animate So what we are going to do in the animate function is we call this method here the request animation frame and for that we must provide a callback function. And what we are going to do is we provide this animate function as a callback function. And that means we have an endless animation loop. And what we are going to do in this function is we do this we do the rendering stuff. We just say renderer and we just say render and by calling the render function we must provide the scene the scene is this one here which will contain all our 3d objects and we also must provide the camera so with this animate function we request an animation frame and for each frame this function is applied so this way we create an endless loop and every time this function is applied we do some rendering so the next step what we need to do is we need to attach this renderer here to our DOM document so we can see the 3D canvas. And we also need to call the animate function. And let me just do this here with 
within this component and in the on init method so what i'm going to do is i need to i need to access the document and i need to create a new element create element of type div and let's say it's uh, i call the variable container and then i need to say document append child i need to say document body append child and i append this new div to the body and also i say this new div append child renderer dom element and that means i am attaching the renderer to the div which is attached to the body and at last i can just call the animate function here so after you have done that and started your application you see this a black 3d canvas that's completely normal we don't have any 3d objects yet and you might notice there's a margin and i want to get rid of this margin I go to the global styles and I just say HTML body and I want the margin to be of zero pixels. So I'm got rid of the margin. And also you might notice another problem is if you resize the window, the size of the canvas stays the same. And we can also manage that by setting a listener to the windows resize. And let us do that by going through this part here again. I can then, and we can access the window. And we just say add event listener. And we specify the type is resize. So every time the window gets resized, we call another function. And it is and we just call it uh, on window resize. And of course, we need to specify the function. Export function on window resize. And what we can do is we just update the camera and the renderer size. So let's say camera aspect. The aspect is the new window width and height inner width divided by window inner height and also camera update projection matrix and also renderer set size with the new window width and height And let's try it out. So I resize the window again, and you see the canvas is also being resized. So why don't we just add some 3D stuff to render? Let's just go here to the scene, and we can just say scene and add, and we can add any kind of 3D object. Let's start with something very simple. We can just say scene add a new three grid helper. And the grid helper is some kind of grid, which you can see here. Let us try it out. Grid helper. And we need to specify the dimensions like width and height, size, divisions, and let's say the color. The color is. Um, we must provide a hex number. Let me just copy one here. This one and also another color. And it's this one. And there you go. You now see the grid. This is the grid, uh, which is it's uh, sitting on our um, floor of the 3D space. This is the origin. 
and you see the camera is looking at the origin. This is the x axis, this is the z axis, and up and down is the y axis. So that is looking really cool. But one thing is missing the camera controls. I cannot move the camera and cannot rotate the camera. So let's just do that. And for that, we can add some orbital controls. It is also in the 3GS package. Let me provide the import for that, just copying it. And it's this one here, the orbit controls from this package. And we can just do that by, let's say I'm gonna instantiate it here, orbital controls. And it's also another variable, I name it control and new orbital controls. I must provide the camera. And I also specify the DOM element, renderer DOM element. So once you have done that, you can use your left mouse button to rotate the camera your right button to drag it around and also your mouse wheel to zoom in and out and that is really really cool. And now let us try to add some 3D geometry objects. And we can also do it fairly easy. We just do here, let's say we want to create a cube and it's also easy, just create a variable, I name it cube and just say it is new 3 mesh so a mesh is a uh, it must uh, be it is defined by a geometry object and also by a material and we can just do this by let's say we want to create a box geometry we can provide it in the constructor new 3 box geometry and the material specifies the appearance of an object. It can contain textures or color or whatever. And let's say I want to create a basic material. Mesh basic material. And what I can do here, I can specify parameter object and I can set the color. And let's say I want the color green. I copy paste it. So we now have a box geometry with the green color. And what I need to do is I need to add this cube to the scene here. And it's also easy. Just do scene add cube. And there you go. Now you have a green cube in our 3D scene. Let's say I would like to move this cube a little bit to the side and I can do that by just going here cube and say position and I would like to move it on the x axis and I would say it is minus two so it is here because I want to add other objects here on the side so let us add some more geometry objects and Let's say the next one is a cone. Let's define a variable named cone with new three mesh. And I add the geometry object cone, cone, geometry, and also a material. Let me just copy paste this one here. And let's say I want to change the color and it must be a little bit bluish and also what else do I need? I need to specify new and let's add this cone to the scene and there you go. This is a cone and what else you can do is you can set the dimensions of the cone let's say i want to let's say i want to change the width of the cone to 0 0.5 now you see it's a little bit smaller also what else can you say is the height you can set radial segments that is number of polygons let's change it 
So this one is the height. I want to I want to have the height of one and I want to set the number of polygons to 32. And you see it is now much smoother, it has more polygons. And I would like to move the cone on the x on the on the z axis a little bit here. So I say cone position z is 2. And there you go. So let us also quickly add a sphere. Let's say I have a variable called sphere new 3 mesh and it is the geometry type sphere new 3 sphere geometry also a simple basic material and let me also provide the color here Let's say I want to have the color yellow, also column new. And I would like to change the position of the sphere. So the position of the sphere is on the x-axis with plus equals 2 and scene at sphere. And there you go, You now we have a sphere here. Let's also change the dimensions. I want to change the radius to 0 0.75. Also increase the number of segments, that is the number of polygons, 32 and 32. And as you see, now we have a smooth sphere. And that's looking really cool. And also let's continue with the torus, const torus and new 3 mesh, new 3 torus geometry and new 3 mesh basic material. And with the color of, let's say it is the color, I don't know, let's try this one. And Taurus position. So I want to place it on the Z axis here. Z minus equals 2. Scene at Torus, and there you go. We have a torus. Let's also change the dimensions. I want the radius to be 0 0.5, the tube is 0 0.1, and also segments, let's say 16 and 32. And now we have a smooth donut here. So now we have tried several, a bunch of geometry objects. There are even more geometry objects. If you take a look at the package, there's like circle, dodecahedron, edges and octahedron and just a bunch of other 3D objects. It might be worth to check it out. All right, so we have tried out four different geometry objects. Let's say we want to play around a little bit more and maybe we want to animate a few objects. Let's say I want to rotate the box and also the, the torus. And we can do that by doing it in this animate function. I can just go here and say cube rotate rotation and I want to rotate it around the y-axis, let's say this, and I can just do it by incrementing it with 0 0.01. And that means every frame, the cube is being rotated around the y-axis with this value. 
and also the same for the torus rotation y plus equals 0 0.01 and let's save that and you see the cube and the torus are rotating so every time you want to have animations you must apply it in this animate function so let us also take a quick look on how to apply textures so here in this assets folder i have this picture and i want to use it as a texture for the box and we can do that by using the texture loader of 3js let me just go to the cube here and let me define another variable called texture and i use three texture loader and i just say and i must say new texture loader load and i must specify the path to the texture and it is the asset folder i just go up and then i need to access the assets folder and also the i'm going to use this picture so now i have loaded the texture and i must apply the texture to the to the material of the cube and the material is this one here i have set the color but now i can get rid of the color i just remove it and i say map and i use the texture object here and as you see that's the result so i have loaded the texture with the texture loader and i have loaded this image stored into the te texture variable and i have added the texture to the map property of the mesh basic material of the cube and this is how it looks like so the next thing we're gonna need to learn is applying lights there are different types of lights in 3gs there's ambient light point light and directional lights so the latter the directional lights is like having a sun shining from above and that's what we are going to use now and it's also fairly simple just create a variable and let's say i call it light and it is a new three directional light directional light and we can also specify some values here like the color i would like to have the color being white and also the intensity the intensity is like the strongness of the light i would like to set it to three and we also need to add the light to our scene add scene add light and once you have done that and you look at the result there there's no changes and you don't see any effect of the light so the reason for that is we have actually used simple basic materials for our 3d objects and the material it specifies the appearance of the object that also means like light reflections or lights on the surface and shadows and if you would like to have the effect of light on our 3d objects we must change the material for that let us first try the mesh lambert material and it's so the mesh lambert material is a non-shiny material that is you don't see any any light reflections and it's just very easy to apply you just change the material of the object which you want to have the material let's say i want to add it to the cube so i change the material of the cube to mesh lambert material and maybe also to the cone let's just do it on the cone as well and let's save it and look at the result and as you see the cube well the, sh the light is shining from the top so the top surface of the cube is being highlighted and the side at the bottom are they have no light so they are in the shadow area and the same is for the cone as you see and let's try the mesh fong material and the mesh fong material is a shiny material that is you see the 
some shininess on the object and let us apply it on the torus and the sphere. So I'm here at the sphere. I apply the mesh form material and also on the on the torus. So let's save it and see the result. And as you can see, the sphere is a little bit shiny as you can see. There's some some light reflections and also on the torus as well. A little bit shininess. And yeah, that's the light. So maybe as a next step I would like to change the direction of the light. As you see, well, maybe I want to have some light from the side as well. So I can see on the side of the cube the texture. So in order to change the direction of the light, maybe I should go and go to the light. Since the light also has a position, it is the position origin, I must set the position to a higher level. And then I would like to shine it from the side, this way. So let's say light position y is plus equals 5. And, and for the light, we can say light set target. So for the light we can set the target. And the target, it must be a 3D object. It can be any kind of 3D object. Let me first create one. Let's say I call it target and new 3 object 3D. And I set the target position to, let's say it is on the X axis, it is here, maybe plus plus 3 or something. Alright, now I need to set light target is the target object. And also I must not forget to add the target to the scene. Add target. And so the result, as you can see, the light is shining from the side. Not straight up from the top, but from the side. So the target of the light is here, somewhere in this position, and the light is shining from the top towards the target. And also as an additional information, you can actually change the color of the backgrounds. You can do that by saying scene, background, and it is a new three color. And let's say I would like to have the color orange, just like that. So I save it, and you see now I have an orange background color. So the last thing I would like to show you guys is how you can load 3D objects into your 3GS application. And 3GS has a GLTF object loader, and GLTF is a file format for 3D objects. It contains information about materials, textures, animations of the 3D objects. And that means you can basically use a 3D program just like Blender and export them in GLTF file format and import them into your 3GS application. For that purpose, I have found some free GLTF objects. I am here in this GitHub repository, GLTF sample models. And there are some example 3D objects, for example, in here in this 2.0 folder. And I have found this object. And as you see, it is this guy here. And it also has an animation. And you can download the GLTF object from this GitHub repository. I have downloaded a file of this 3D object. I think it's the GLTF binary version. And I have put it into the asset folder right here. And I can use the 3GS GLTF loader to load this object and display it in my scene. So let's get started right away. We must first create an instance of the loader. We can just do it by defining, let's say, a variable. I call it loader and it's a new gltf 3 gltf loader i must import it correctly just providing this import here 
loading the GLTF loader from this package and remove that. So having this loader, I can just call loader and load. I can do it asynchronously with this. So I need to provide the path to the object I want to load. It, it is in the asset folder, assets and cesium man this. And once it has been loaded, I must say what I need to do with the object. So I must provide a, I must provide a promise and let's say I have this variable gltf and I am doing this. So what I can do is I can say scene and add and I can say the gltf object dot scene and save it and let's see how it looks like. So there you go guys. Now I have this guy imported into my 3D scene. And the good thing is this 3D object also has an animation. I can also extract the animation and uh, apply it. In order to access the animation of this object, I need to first create a mixer. And let me create the mixer outside of the function. Let's say it's a var mixer. It is not instantiated yet. And let's say once the object has been loaded, I say mixer is new 3 animation mixer and I provide the gltf the gltf scene so now I have this mixer and I must say mixer clip action And in the clip action, I must provide an animation. And I know that this object has a one animation, gltf, animations. And I can do a hard-coded access with zero, because I know this object has one animation. And then I can say, I must assign this one to a variable action. I must say action play. That means I would like to play the animation. And what happens now is the animation is not being played. I need to apply the mixer in our animation loop. So now I have this mixer and I must use it in the animate function. And I can say mixer update. And when calling update, I need to specify the delta time. And the delta time is the time which has elapsed between the frames. And that means we need to measure the time between the frames. For that we can use a clock. 3JS provides a clock for that. And it's a new 3 clock. And we can access it with, let's say, clock get delta. I store it into a variable delta and I provide the delta to the mixer update function. And when I save it, we see that the animation is being played properly. And that's looking really cool. So that's it. That is my short introduction to 3JS. I hope you liked the video and have a nice day.